morning, everybody. Um, I know all of you were expected to be somebody different speaking today. Uh, so was I. Um, <laughs> so, unfortunately, Joe Huddleston, that should have been speaking this morning, part of our core leadership team, a uh, great speaker. Unfortunately, she's hurt her back uh, and she's quite immobile. Uh, so, you've got me, but that's not too bad, is it? <laughs> I just want to encourage you to pray for me. We've got a number of people that are ailing with ongoing illnesses in church and you can pray for them through your connect groups and through a prayer meeting and things. So I just want to encourage you. You know, we've got Sue in hospital at the moment, one or two people having tests, uh, people with ongoing illness like Julie, various. There's a whole string of people at the moment, but we have a good, good God, don't we? We have a good Father. So let's pray for some healing and release into those lives. Uh, in fact, why don't I just pray now before we start? Would that be good? Um, feel free to raise your hands or to stand or sit, or if you're near somebody to hold your hand out to them, if you know that they're ill, and I'm just going to lead in prayer. Lord, we know that you are a good, good Father. We know, Lord, that you, you hold nothing back from us. So we pray now for uh, our, our, our people that we love that are in hospital, at Old Mill, for Joe, for Julie, for Sue, for other people, for another Sue, Lord, all facing things. Lord, we know that you are a good, good God. Yeah. We know that you're a God of miracles. And we pray for your Holy Spirit healing in these situations. Lord, we don't want to talk about these things. We want to talk about what once was. We want to live in your kingdom come today, in this situation. Uh, Lord, now, your kingdom come yeah. in this room. So we pray for healing, and we believe it, Lord. We believe you're a God of miracles. Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. So, uh, you've got me this morning. As you can tell, I'm time-filling. Um, because <laughs> this is very last minute sermon prep this is, uh, so this is a one off this is not part of the series I've been doing uh, so uh, if you're watching online at home you are super super welcome if you're in the room you are incredibly welcome uh, it's, it's still kind of strange isn't it to be scattered and not be able to we thought next Sunday was the big gathering when everybody's back in the room and we're all hugging and kissing and pushing people away for trying to kiss me and all that kind of thing and just, just the day's going to come but you know what the most important thing is we gather together in the name of Jesus, whether that's online this morning or in person, is the same God. He's our Lord, he's our Saviour, and he's walking us through this. But I just thought I'd address some of these things sometimes. Uh, and so th this, this morning's sermon's entitled, You Can't Stop Halfway When You're Parachuting. Okay? <laughs> once you've, once you've leapt from a, an airplane with a parachute on your back, or without a parachute on your back, then there is no way of turning back. There's no way of going back. You, there's nothing you can do. You've just got to go for it. Um, has anybody ever jumped from the top board of a diving, of, of, of a, in a swimming bath, on the very top diving board? The first time I did it, I stood at the end for ages. And the minute I stepped off, I changed my mind. <laughs> and so instead of going from a, a you know, a sensible, they, they said, you know, put your hands together like that. My immediate response to small boy was to say, no, I'm not doing this. I'm staying on the board and tried to turn around and grab it, <laughs> which of course means you're then flailing through the air. It hurt like I can't begin to tell you. You can't change your mind once you've begun. You can't stop halfway when you've committed. Some things you commit to and you've committed to it. If you stop halfway, it will hurt. You can't stop halfway with faith. If you pull out halfway, it will hurt. Parachute a diving board, you have to commit. I want to tell you a, about me committing to something. I want to, I'm going to talk about marathon running all morning this morning. How boring is that for you a lot? It's better than football. There's so much football on telly. I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about marathon running instead of football. Okay? As you can see, I'm no longer built to be a marathon runner. And Facebook has been very cruel to me recently. It's been putting up... Your memory from five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, and I get progressively thinner. <laughs> it's really quite depressing. I'm now starting to look like the pictures from ten years ago, which is not a good thing. Um, so I've now got to reverse that trend because I've got marathon races booked. Um, but I once ran a marathon in Wales, a cross-country one in Snowdonia, and it was the hardest thing I have ever, ever done. And I shall tell you why it was the hardest thing. Why would you think it's hard? Because of the hills? Because of the mud? Because of the cold? None of those reasons. It's because halfway around, at exactly half marathon point, you ran past the start-finishing line. 
And you were entitled to pull out of the race at that point and receive a half marathon medal. And as you approach the half marathon medal point, you think to yourself, it's still a medal. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a reward. I've just run a half a marathon in the mountains. I've earned it. But then the other part of your brain is saying, but it's not the race you entered. Yeah, but I still have a medal I can show off, but it's not the race you entered. But I've run a long way, so I've earned the T-shirt, but it's not the race you entered. I entered the Athens Marathon, and it got cancelled. So you know what they did? They sent me a T-shirt saying, you completed the Athens Marathon. They obviously had a lot of leftover T-shirts that said 2020 on them. And I can't wear it. I can't bring myself to put the T-shirt on because it's not the race I entered. It would be a mediocre race. If I'd have, run, if I'd have pulled out halfway around the marathon and got half, half a marathon medal and not the full thing, it would have been half of what I'd set out to do. It would have been less. I would have known that I, I, it's not the race I entered. I've got the T-shirt, I've got the medal, but it's not the race I entered. We've got to run the full race. When we commit, we've got to commit. I see this all the time in church as we walk with God and reach out for the vision. There's a point in all of our lives where we start to say to ourselves, I've done well. I've run half the race. Maybe it's time for, to say I've got the T-shirt. Maybe it's time for me to step back and let other people finish the race. I see it all the time, the temptations there. It feels like when I'm running this race in God, this race of faith, there is always that moment of choice that comes. Abel, hey, well, I've done well. People would always save me. He, he, he did well. But then I realize our race of faith is a race of faith to the end. Because if I'm breathing, God's not done with me. So if God's not done with me, I've not done with him. So I've got to continue running. See, today's Father's Day. And I love Father's Day. I, I, I love it because it's like a birthday all over again. <laughs> My daughter said to me this morning, I think we should have Daughter's Day. And Neil shouted out, you get Daughter's Day every day of the year. <laughs> Too right. So we're having, <laughs> we're not having Sons and Daughters Days. You get that once a year on your birthday. We're having Dad's Day today. It's Father's Day. But here's the thing, I didn't get my kids to the age of nine years old and say, you're halfway to adulthood, I've done my bit now, I've got the t-shirt, you're on your own. I didn't stop feeding them, I didn't stop housing them, or I just said, okay guys, there you go, there's your door, it's been good. I, just don't, I don't feel I can complete the second half. Actually, I did do that sometimes, I said, Grand's just around the corner, it's about 100 yards kids, you know where she lives. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We commit to something, we continue in God. We're always at the center, though, of our world. We're always at, God always puts us at the center of the world where we have choices. You know, people like to be, I'm the center of the universe. Well, God actually puts us at the center of the world to make choices. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15, it says this. This is God talking to Abraham, the kind of, if you like, the founder of all of our faith and all of our history and heritage, the, the, the guy where we pull everything back to this. And God says to this one man, look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. So he puts him at the center of it and says, if you can see it, I can give it to you. But you've got to run your race with me. It's that kind of Lion King moment, isn't it? All the land you can see, they're yours. What's the shadow of lands? That's Lancashire, son. Don't go there. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> if Kerry's watching this at home, your husband Tim has just said amen to my comments about Lancashire being the Shadowlands. For those that don't know, and you're watching online, um, Tim is from Yorkshire. Kerry's wife is from Lancashire. <laughs> I have a heritage from both Lancashire and Yorkshire, so I'm allowed to say anything I like. <laughs> which way, though? When you're in the centre of everything, which way? Which way do you go? Do you go back? Do you go forward? Do you go left? Do you go right? Choices. That's my number one point this morning. We have choices. In God, we always have choices. Don't feel that you are a prisoner to your faith. You have choices. When I was running my race, the choice hit me at the halfway point in Wales. Do I pull out at the halfway point and get a medal? 
particularly the medal in Wales, it was an eco race, so you got a wooden medal. <laughs> it wasn't even a medal, actually. I made it into a medal. It was actually a cup mat that I, put a rib I glued a ribbon on when I got home so I could hang it up with all the others. <laughs> so I get to the halfway point. Do I run any further? But the race I entered wasn't a half marathon. It was a race. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 speaks directly into this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. You see, the sin that so easily entangles us, that is the choice moment. That is the choice moment. Am I still in this race for God or is this for me? Am I still running to God or have I given up at this point? The complete address is Jesus yeah. and running with him to the very end because he's the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Yeah. Only when we choose to look beyond the obvious option of slowing and stopping and choose instead to run our race with endurance can our destiny be revealed in Christ. Yeah, well, I like that, Joel. Please, I'm going to say that again in that case. And only when we choose, only when we choose to, let, 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 let me explain to you, let me explain to you what happens. When I, when I ran my first marathon, at approximately one mile, there was a first aid tent, and people were stopping in the first aid tent with blisters and being tired. One mile in. I thought it was going to be fun. Did you train? No, because I thought it was going to be fun. God never said of our walk with him, it's going to be fun. We can have fun doing it, but he said it's going to be endurance. It's going to be fulfilling. It's going to be with purpose. It's going to be satisfying. It's going to be worthwhile. But he also said in this life there will be trouble. It's going to come to that later. Press on. Only when we choose to look beyond the obvious option of slowing and stopping and choose instead to run our race with endurance can our destiny be revealed in Christ. Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So when you're halfway around the race, when you're partway through, you cannot see the finishing line. You just have to know it's there. You have to know that there's an objective. You have to know what you're running towards. You have to know your purpose. And sometimes you just have to put one foot in front of the other. Sometimes you just have to choose not to stop. Sometimes you just have to choose in this Christian life to say, I am not stopping now. I am not going to say, well, I've got the T-shirt. I've done my bit. Over to somebody else now. Because I've got to ask the question, are you still breathing? Because if you're still breathing, God has not done yet. And if he's not done with you, don't be done with him. When I read that section from Hebrews that says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. There's then a list of people full of faith that span hundreds, if not thousands of years. All these people have walked in faith before God. And they were all people that saw something bigger than they were. And people sold out for God, walking for him, given to the future that God was building. And they weren't stopping halfway. I just want to say to you, if you're thinking, but I'm not good enough, I need to stop, and I've done my bit, or I'm tired, or I'm bored, or I'm worn out, uh, or my experience and my history is too difficult for me to run a race for God, I'm not good enough. I just want to say to you, anyone can run that race. Yeah. Anyone can complete it. Anyone can complete it. It's not about background. It's not about health. It's not about education. It's not about your parents. It's not about your gender. It's not about your ethnicity. It's not about your start in life. All those are the restrictions that the world can place upon us in our race. It's about being willing to believe God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, including ourselves. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. You know all the stuff that tells you why you can't? Is the old stuff that is gone. All the history, all the damage, all the things that hurt you, all the things that could break you as a person. When you commit your life to Jesus Christ, when you become his, when you become a Christian, when you begin your journey with him, when you begin your marathon race with him that lasts your entire life, the new has come. And you are able 
God is able to do immeasurably more in us than we can ever dream or imagine. This is our God opportunity in the race to know that God is running it. Do you know that your life is full of God-designed possibilities? Your life is full of God-designed possibilities. So the second thing is, it's me that's preaching, not Neil. Oh, it's me, it's me. Every, so everybody at home, everybody's looking this way because they're discussing cameras. But it's me, everybody in the room, look at me, look at me. It's my one moment in centre stage. Come on, my ego needs you to look at me. Okay, now you're all looking at me again. Number two, it's your choice. Number two, it's your choice. Listen carefully. You don't have to be great to start this race. This is your choice. You do not have to be great to start this race, but you have to start to feel great as you finish it. But you have to start if you're going to feel great when you finish it. You don't have to, you, you don't have to be great. So you, you, know, you might think, I'm not good enough to start this race. Uh, yeah, you're right, you're not, but start anyway. Yeah. Let God work with you. Yeah. Let God run with you. But look at me, look at all these things. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I'd look at you and probably think, yeah, I wouldn't start the race if I were you either. Because I would look in the mirror and think, Paul, don't start this race. But in God, it's not about how we start, it's where we finish. Yeah. And I want to finish well. Yeah. I, don't want to, I don't want to be that person that says, I've got, I know people that have said it. Oh, one day I'm going to. One day I'm going to. One day you're going to what? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And they never do. Just commit. Just put it out there. Just be outlandish and say, I'm going to do this. And then it's the same thing with God. Just say, I'm going to do this. I am going to commit all heartily to God. I'm going to jump from this plane. I'm going to jump from the diving board. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do it. I have no idea how it's going to land, but I know that God will land me. Yeah. We get to do this. We don't have to. We get to. You know, when I jumped off that diving board, I didn't have to do it. I got to do it. And you know the thing is, that day when I didn't want to do it and I changed my mind halfway down, I must have jumped off it 20 times. And every time it just got better. And every time I still felt a little bit scared. And every time I landed on my belly, it still hurt. <laughs> but somehow, that sense of, well, it's not flying, it was falling in style, as someone once said, <laughs> felt great. Every time I enter a race, especially now I'm getting bigger, it feels good. It feels good to know. Lots of Christians live dormant lives imagining what it may be like to go all out for God. I want to encourage you to put on your shoes and run that race for God. Don't imagine what it could be. Don't rule yourself out, but put on your shoes and say, I am ready. I'm going to run that race for God. Psalm 27 verse 13 says this, I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. You know, sometimes we think our Christian faith is about one day we'll get pie in the sky. One day I'll get to be heaven. One day I'll, I'll, I'll see St. Peter. I'll be issued a golden harp and a cloud of my own and then I'll be in heaven. Frankly, that sounds like the most boring place on earth. For one, I can't play a harp. And I just think it's, it, it undervalues what God is doing. Yeah. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. I remain, listen to what Psalm said again. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. Yeah. Where does that say it'll be all right when you die? I want to see the goodness of God in my life. Yeah. I want to see the goodness of God in your life. It doesn't matter about history and circumstances. God makes us all things new. It begins with, you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Therefore, in this new land of the living, I can see the goodness of God. You're not a hopeless runner. No matter, that the situa no matter what your situation, we don't lose hope. Not because one day we find heaven, but because we see the goodness of God in the land of the living today. So when we pray casually at the beginning of this meeting for God's healing in lives, I believe we can see God's healing in those lives today in the land of the living. If ever I die of some illness, if anybody says at my funeral, well, he's healed now, slap them. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That is the most annoying phrase ever used. If you've ever used it, then I, forgive me. I know it's meant well, but the reality is I want to see the miracles of God in my life today. Yes. I don't wonder I'll be called home. That's fine. I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that, but I want to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. God promises that. So why would, I, why, would I, why would I stop halfway in my commitment? Why would I pull out the race halfway and say, this part of the race, Lord, but not that bit, because that bit's difficult? Because the second part, the big stuff, is always difficult. You know, the worst part of the race in Wales was that it was the same course twice. So second time, it's not even new. And then you know at the last bit, there's a, there's, a, there's a slope. Some of you wanted a half marathon there with me. I can't remember what the last slope was, was called, but it's something like the death climb or something. It was, just, it was something stupidly named. And you stand at the bottom of it and you think, that's not a track, that's a cliff. And you kind of, you literally go up most on, on, on all fours, pulling yourself up. And it lasts for about 400 metres. But when you've just run 26 miles and last 400 metres... And then they fool you because you think you've made it to the top and it's all downhill because you can see the finish line, the distance, and you can see it through the woods and you run downhill towards it into a dip <laughs> before the final climb to the finishing line, which is the steepest hill in the history of steep hills. And when you're halfway around and you're thinking, I could pull out now or do this again. <laughs> Who's pulling out now? Oh, yeah. Lots of people pull out now. Or you can do it again. Church, there are going to be those moments in your Christian life. If you're watching and talking, there are going to be moments in your life where you're going to say, I'm pulling out now. I have gone this far and it has been so, so hard. But I feel like I've won a, a, a reward. I feel like I walked faithfully this first half. But I want to tell you, if you want to see the victory, we've got to walk to the end of the race. We've got to make it to the end of the race. We've got to run our race. It's the difference in our lives. There is no pain like pressing on for the finishing line, except the pain felt when you pull out before it. There is no pain like pressing on for the finishing line, except the pain felt when you pull out before it. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6 says this, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Yeah. Hey, so I, can, I, can, I love that Paul could write to an early church and proclaim that God is not finished and he's going to complete you. Yeah. Yeah. And so I can stand here in confidence and say God has begun a good work in you and will complete it. And if you're watching online at home, I can say God has begun a good work in you and will complete it. And of course, some of us are at all different places. Some of us are at one mile. Some of us are at 10 miles. Some of us are at mile 26. Some of us are at mile 26 in 300 yards. Some of us are still on the finishing line debating whether you want to start running. Some of you are in the shop debating whether to buy shoes. Am I going to become a Christian or not? But I know this in Jesus. He will complete it. You can complete it. And we can celebrate that. God is not done yet. So if you're at home watching this and you're facing physical situations, health situations, pressure situations, stress stuff, are you in the room facing the same things? I just know. I'm confident of this, that he'll begin a good work in you. will carry on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. When we run our race in Jesus, when we live the adventure set out for us in God, we build others up and inspire those around us to faith. So Paul was able to say, I thank God for you. It built him up because they were running their race. So when I'm surrounded by people like you that are running your race, overcoming, pressing through. And let's, let's talk to someone in the room. Andrew, when we, when, we, when we walk with people that are pressing through, that are running their race, that are breaking through, and we know God will complete you, we see him doing it, it builds us up. Rowena, when we see God doing things in your life, when we see you pressing through, when you're able to be here on a Sunday and then work's going to make you work lots of other weeks, we know that we are confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I can say that again and again around the room. Here's a choice. You didn't get to choose how or where you were born. You do get to choose how you live and run in Jesus. Because he chose you. 1 Peter chapter 2. Just listen on this. When you think you've had a bad start, when you think it's not fair, when you think stuff's happened to you, when you think, why me? Well, why you when this is true of you as well? That you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, 
that you may declare the praises of him will call you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You know, the old is gone, the new has come. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you would not receive mercy, but now you have received mercy. How good is that? Yes. See, I love the Bible. People say, oh, the Bible's not. No, the Bible's amazing. It's full of the promises and truth and word and heart of God. It shows us the heart of God towards us. And then you all shout back to me, but it hurts. <laughs> when I'm running around a marathon race for the first 20 Six miles. I go, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Whose idea was this? I once actually stopped for a costler halfway around. I'm not kidding. I was running past the garage. I saw they had a costler machine. I thought, I'm in. <laughs> so I dashed inside and go, take away costler. And I ran about a mile like that. Wow, that caffeine did me good. <laughs> Americano. Boom, I'm running. John chapter 16 says this, Do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each of you uh, to your own home. You will leave me alone, yet I am not alone. My Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I'm just going to read that first line again. Do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each to their own home. But we're not alone. Now, that wasn't about COVID, but it still works. We're scattered to our own homes. We can't gather properly, but we are not alone. Sometimes we get to that church has been scattered by persecution and suffering. We're in some, to some extent are scattered because of circumstance in the world, because of illness, because of all those pressures. But get this, God is not done yet. The real choice comes when the race is hard. It's easy to to talk about running the race. On the first few hundred yards, it's easy to talk about how good it is to be a runner. It's the last leg, it's the last half where we choose to run the race. When you run, you know the finish line is real. Somehow you know it's still worth running. The victory is within you. Luke chapter 11, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Because number three, God's choice is your best choice. God's choice is your best choice. Your kingdom come. There are those times when we can't see or understand and all we can do is trust God. There are those times when you're living your Christian life and all this weirdness is happening around us. What a weird world we live in. What a weird world. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to criticise, I just want to say, it's a weird world. And our lives are weird, how we're living is strange and difficult. There are those times when we can't see, but we've got to understand that God has not finished yet. Yeah. We've got to know, I can't see the finishing line, so I'm going to choose to trust God. Because yeah. his best is the best. Galatians chapter 4, a letter to the early church. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son to redeem us. That we might receive adoption to sonship because you are his sons. God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts. The spirit who calls that Abba Father. So you are no longer a slave but God's child. Since you were his child, God has made you also an heir. When the set time had come. You see, God's time. God knows. God's dealing with this. He knows. And he has made us heirs to those promises. So if God has promised these things to us, they are true and they are happening. The heir will receive the promise. We receive the promise, the finishing line, the victory. So let's not pull out. Oh, past church, let's not pull out halfway through this race. There are good things coming. Yeah. The best is yet yeah. to come. Yeah. The best is yet to come. So we turn up and we stay. We don't stay away. We, we don't run away. We're on the right way, yeah. God's way. That is our choice. We're on a journey together. We don't live waiting for the big event to change us. We turn up again and again and seek to help to grow and to change and to build one another up. That's what we do. We persevere, we endure, we run our race. When we're struggling or don't understand and don't know what to do, we don't stay away, we turn up and pray. We turn up and pray for one another, we encourage one another and we start with these words, your kingdom come on earth. Yeah. Stick with this. You know, on July the 5th in the evening, we've got a big meeting coming up. It'll be a bit of Zoom, it'll be a bit, a bit in person, and it's going to be about the future and the vision and the shape of church as we're going forward. 
big news, big announcements, scary stuff, difficult stuff. And here's the deal. I want to tell you now, it's the halfway point of our marathon. Except even as I'm saying that, I feel God's going to enter us into another marathon. <laughs> the adventure is just beginning, so let's not pull out now. Something I learned about running my marathon, one adventure isn't enough. Before the race, before the finish, sorry, before the, you finish the race, you say in your head, I am never doing this again. Honestly, no matter what the distance, you say in your head, I am never doing this again. Five minutes after, you know in your heart... You'll be booking the next race by the time you get home. Before the finishing line, I am never doing this again. The minute I've crossed the finishing line, where can I sign up for next year? For the next adventure. Church, if you're facing a difficult place right now, I just want to say, you can sign up for the next adventure. I'm going to ask the band back to stage if that's all right. I want to encourage you, whether you're at home or in the room, the adventure can start here. Because every time you make a choice to keep running with God, every time you make that choice to continue, your adventure continues. And that is just exciting. That is just so special. See, there are so many times in our walk with God, in our race with Him, in our adventure with Him, that we can choose to pull out. We can choose to say, I've got the T-shirt. I did well. I've got a kind of reward. I've got a halfway medal. I did my bit. Or we can say, I'm still breathing. I'm going to run to finish line. I'm going to complete this. And even as you're completing it, and you think, wow, we've done it, let's sit back and bask and know we did a good thing. Ask yourself, am I still breathing? Because if I'm still breathing, the adventure continues. The next race is going to be entered. The adventure begins. But you have to commit. You've got to commit in such a way that it's like leaping from a plane and saying there's no going back. It's like leaping from the top board and saying there's no going back. It's like kicking off from the start line and saying there's no going back. It's like passing the halfway point and saying I'm not pulling out. Because once you've passed it, there's no going back. And this morning, I want to encourage you to say, I'm committing to this. There is no going back. There is no soft option that will be fulfilling. There's no halfway point that will be purposeful or worthy or a victory or a win in my life. There is only going all the way with God. There's only, only trust in him to the finishing line. I'm going to pray a prayer that's about committing our lives to Jesus in a personal way. This is, I, I, this is my life is now yours. And when we pray this prayer, it's like leaping off that top board and trusting that God has filled the pool up. That we will splash and land and it will be safe. This prayer is a prayer of commitment saying, I give my life to you. And if you have not prayed that prayer before, I encourage you to pray it. And as we pray it, get in touch with us so we can support you and encourage you and run that race with you, that Christian life with you. Let the new in and let the old go. And if you are a Christian, I should encourage you to pray it again and to say, I'm committing to running this race. I'm not pulling out halfway. I don't want a T-shirt for the half marathon. I want my medal for completing the race and being called home. So let's pray then straight to the band. Lord Jesus, I know I have done things wrong in my thoughts, words and actions. There are so many good things I have not done. There are so many wrong things I have done. I'm sorry for those wrong things and turn from everything I know to be bad. You gave your life for me on the cross and gratefully I give my life back to you. Now I ask you to come into my life. Come in as my saviour to clean me. Come in as my Lord to lead me and I will serve you all the remaining days of my life. Amen. And Lord, we pray, if people have prayed that this morning, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would fill them, that you would touch them, you would grab their heart, you would grab their mind, and you would help them to see you and to know you, to be close to you. Lord, we pray your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.